The Gifted, Season 1, Episode 5. Thoughts? This episode is called Boxed In. Another episode I love. Spoilers for every live-action movie and TV show within the X-Men continuity that has been released up to and including this episode. This show is rated TV 14, and so will this video be. Let's dive right in. So we start with another flashback. Okay, I am I think it was just in the show Bible. If you're writing an episode, try to see if you can fit in a flashback. Again, I'm not complaining. Just can't help but notice. Yeah, this was four years ago, and we see, you know, the, the tragic death, death of Jace and Paula's daughter, Grace, or Gracie Face. And, yeah, you know, on, on that day, Jace lost Grace and Face in more ways than one. And I appreciate that they did not feel the need. I suppose it's possible they couldn't have on that, you know, on a TV-14 rating, to show us a dead what was six-year-old, I think they said. You know, that's not something we need to see. And, yeah, it was it was very effective. You know, you can appreciate why you know, yeah, why he's so devastated by this this loss. And we learn that, you know, yeah, he was already, like, law enforcement, but he was basically, like, a, a cop. He wasn't Sentinel Services yet. You know, this motivated him to do that. You know, ever since this day, every time he sees a mutant, he thinks, you know, it's all your fault, your entire, you know... This entire minority group is to blame for, you know, that they, as if, you know, the vast majority of them personally did that to him. You know, they're not motivated by evil, they're, they're just people. Most of them would never have hurt a six-year-old. They wait until the kid is at least seven. No. Um, let's see, and then we have the... Yeah, I like, you know, you go, I go, and she uses her powers to, which I appreciate that, honestly, I, sh I should probably have been able to piece together, somehow it just didn't quite, I, I kept thinking, oh, it's telekinesis, but then, you know, episode before this one, they explain, no, it's, it's metal, she, you know, polaris, she inverts polarity, kind of thing, you know, it's, it's like if Magrunner, was not a bad, you know, game. It's it's that kind of power, but but yeah, um, you know, because like the door opening like that, that's not the most difficult, you know, special effect to do. Like if I had to guess, maybe there's someone sitting inside, in like a a green suit, and they shot a a clean background plate. Maybe it's being like pulled open by wire, some, something, you know, but it's not like they had to levitate a building or something. And, yeah, they, they realize there must be a drone, and, oh, it's above them, and she takes the, the car mirror, car door, yeah, whatever, and, and, you know, it, it goes, let's see, yeah, yeah, she's, like, holding it with her power, and then he reflects the his light powers off it it's a little too bad that we don't get to see the actual thing blowing up you know we, we see it land afterwards but that was to, you know they, i appreciate them not wanting to push past what they can do with the the special effects you know occasionally they do accidentally go a little bit too far but yeah the the no that was a really cool way of of you know yeah they're they're just really really good together and yeah, very very sweet when when Reed is reunited with his kids. And yeah, um, of course, confrontation between Fade and Reed because yeah, you know, last Fade saw, you know, yeah, Reed came clean and tried to make amends. But he still, he got a lot of the weight there with the, with a the tracker on him. So, yeah. And, 
let's see. Yeah, and and I appreciate it actually leads to a discussion. You know, it and and Fade, you know, tells the people of the of the headquarters, you know, this guy was working for Sentinel Services. You know, and and yeah, that of course, the the um, yeah, leads to a murmur. I am distressed and will murmur to that effect. And it's one of those things where, like, essentially, if John really wanted to, he could have, like, stopped Fade from, from making that clear. But then he looks really bad, you know. Oh, so the leader doesn't want us to know the full truth kind of thing. You know, because the people who know Fade already probably know, you know, he's... He can be tense, but he, you know, as far as the audience has seen, he doesn't seem to lie. You know, he's not the the type who would just throw someone to the wolves just because he doesn't really like them. And, you know, he's been very faithful. He's he's risked himself, you know, to help the, the mutant underground. Some of the people there probably have been helped by him personally. And see. yeah, and we have the moment of, of you know at first, like Kate doesn't actually believe you know she she says Fade must be lying about Reed. She can't imagine that he would actually do that. And yeah, he comes clean and says no, that it's it's the truth. And yeah, good discussion between. I, I think it's just the the. Um, yeah, Lauren and, and Andy talk about, you know, should we should we leave or should we stay and try to earn their trust? And, yeah. Um, Dreamer and, and uh, uh, honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember which character but you know she talks to another character and the, you know the subject comes up if if Reed leaves we may have to make him forget about the mutant underground and you know Clarice overhears that and you know yeah can't help but wonder you know is this is this why and they do a really good job like it's set up maybe 10 minutes into the episode and by the end of the episode she's completely reached the point where you know she's she's she feels confident enough to confront because that's you know you don't want to just do that on a whim you don't want to sour a relationship like that just you know because of a, a stray thought or something you have to feel fairly confident and also you know yeah over the course of it she gets little bits and pieces of uh, you know information to help yeah Let's see, and yeah, Reed helps them deal, you know, th there's that thing, I want to say it's Sage, who, you know, points out, well, you know, you know, five minutes ago they were all talking about the manhunt, and now they're not, you know, and, and Reed points out this is not, you know, they're not going to send every unit to deal with, you know, I, f I forget what it exactly it was but yeah it was some you know you, you hear him say what that is police code for and it's like yeah there's no way they're gonna you know so so very clever and and that is a thing that you know every so often in in stuff like this you know someone realizes oh they're listening in we better use code you know where's Alan Turing when you need him oh right prison. Well, okay, by this point he's actually dead, but never forget dude saved lots of lives, and then they put him in prison for being gay. And, let's see, then we have the... Yeah, uh, Marcos and, and Lorna in, in the car, and I guess I should be calling her Polaris as well, just, uh, yeah. And, and, you know, he's like, ah, oh, She's having my baby. What a wonderful way to show she cares. That is such a messed up song. Anyway, and he thought he was being nice. You know, he thought, oh, this is, this, you know, anyway. Um, 
Let's see, but but yeah, um, it it is legitimately sweet. Them talking about you know the the baby, my baby, our baby. That's the first time I've said those words. If if it's a girl, it should be Aurora. If it's a boy, Rory. I mean, that's the male version of Aurora, isn't it? it just yeah, they're they're so sweet together, and I really hope they're not headed for like a tragic yeah. And. Let's see. Yeah, the they spot the SS, including Jace, and I love the swagger on Pilar. You know, she she gets out of the car and just like struts. That was really badass. We should all have that kind of confidence. And yeah, you know, easily takes out these. You know, they weren't expecting to have to deal with such a, a strong mutant they but by, by themselves because jace specifically said you know 20 minutes ago i i asked for for backup and now they're 10 minutes away and actually yeah that i guess that's the back the, the backup is what catches up to to lorna marco polaris marcos and the others later in the episode very nicely done and, you know, yeah, they, they got there 10 minutes later, realized, oh, Jace is gone, and started looking for where he could possibly be. And let's see, then we have the... Um, yeah, um, so, so yeah, the, um, they kidnap Jace. And, you know, at first it looks like, oh... You know, Polaris is gonna torture Jace because she feels like it, because you know, as as revenge. But she, you know, she wants information. You know, I maintain she didn't have to wrap that thing around his neck. You know, that was not. Uh, there's other ways to prevent someone from from escaping. You know, like hypothetically, if if his hands. Were, were like tied together by the the steel bar above his head he's not going anywhere you know he's not gonna how, how do you how would you get away from from a steel bar around your your wrists the fact that she specifically puts it around his neck yeah you know I do appreciate you know she says we're not gonna torture you that's your department and yeah, uh, the the Struckers, other than Reed, are trying to to save the you know the lives of these you know the, yeah the the injured mutants and such. And I appreciate so so yeah Andy said you know or the the pee bag, the pee looking bag, and Lauren's like, could you be any more gross? And he's like, do you really want to ask me that? <laughs> Which yeah, uh, that's. Do not double dog dare a, a teenage boy to be as gross as, as he can be. That is not going to you're you're not gonna like the result. And and yeah, again, this very credible sibling dynamic. Have I mentioned how great the acting is? I, I sometimes I forget the the across the board, I don't think there's been a single bad performance. Like even the the couple of kid actors we've seen, fantastic you know really really convincing performances and and yeah the thing you know he andy says you know i'm i'm o negative what are you surprised i remember anything from biology and you know laura's like i am and yeah you know he agrees to the the the, the transfusion which you know yeah, that's that's not nothing. That is a you know, and the the yeah. I will say, I did find myself thinking, why are there not more than these three people dealing with this? You know, really dangerous. You know, with this like medical emergency. Obviously, the the like if you ask the writers, they'd be like, well, this is the you know the scene. Is about those three people you know that's that's why I mean if we had to try to make an in-universe I guess maybe every other mutant or yeah everyone else in the mutant underground is dealing with something equally important I, I could see that they've gotten a lot of 
there's there's a lot of heat on them, you know. I'm I'm sure it is, you know, everyone is is you know doing as much as they can to to help. But but yeah, you know, he agrees to to the the transfusion and you know she she gets out the the needle and and gets like a, a lighter to to stair master it and then you know start the the transfusion and um, let's see um, yes the then we have. The, yeah, uh, they they mention you know July fifteenth, and Marcos points out the the you know that was the it was the cops escalating and that's again sadly very often the case when there's violence at a at a protest you know left wing protests you know tend to start non violently and then c cops or you know, sometimes it's Proud Boys. Yeah, they they escalate the the situation, and sometimes the cops, you know, back up the Proud Boys, which really doesn't help them trying to convince the rest of us that they're not fascists themselves. The cops, I don't think the Proud Boys are really even pretending that they're not fascists. But but yeah, and and you know, there's the point made about you know people died on both sides, and that's again something that too often, you know, far right conservatives claim. Oh, you know, that was you attacking us, and it's yeah. I really appreciate the the nuance here, and they outright refer to it as seven fifteen, which is obviously. Yeah, in in this universe, seven fifteen is like nine eleven, but with with mutants, and it is absolutely true that there has been like a, I can appreciate some might find that it's in in bad taste to to bring up something that happened in the real world to to draw this this parallel kind of thing. You know, I, I do think that there are some, some TV shows that have a bit of a problem with that. Um, let's see. The, what network was gifted on? Okay. okay, it's really not making it easy for me to find. Um, okay, I'm just going to go ahead. What network was the gifted on? Okay, it was it. Uh, nope, that's there. We go. Yeah, it was it was on Fox. You know, they do sometimes do that sort of thing. They they also, um, yeah. So actually, now that I think about which network was Sarah Connor Chronicles? Yes, that was also Fox. That one also did, yeah, that one also brought up 9-11, and that one it wasn't even, like, yeah, I would definitely say this does less, this one is much less messed up. But, but yeah, after 9-11, there were a lot of hate crimes and laws that targeted, you know, Muslim immigrants to America, even though most of them were against 9-11, they, they weren't, yeah, and and you know the a number of them have criticized the you know they they despite what some conservatives would have you believe there are a lot of moderate Muslims who criticize extremism and you know this is a decent time for me to point out if you live in America and there's a terrorist attack it's more likely to be a white supremacist domestic terrorist than a Muslim. And let's see. Yeah, and that actually, yeah. Um, I'm thinking that this is what the, like that was the event that led to all these laws. 
you know, to, to the worsening of laws. And and again, you know, in, in real life, 9-11 was used as an excuse to pass the Patriot Act, which is also, you know, early in an earlier episode, they referred to the anti-mutant laws of this show as the, I, I want to say they called it the Amended Patriot Act or something like that. And, yeah, you know, Muslim immigrants are also a group that have been abused in America. The way that a lot of the show, it's, you know, it comes across as, you know, like a, a trans metaphor. And, yeah, um, I, I appreciate the, the attention of, you know, will Fade actually work with, with Reed after the the circumstance and it's also very clever like yeah a, a guy who can make not only himself but also the vehicle he's driving invisible yeah that's extremely useful if you're trying to hide you know it's it's no wonder like basically in order to to try to get to to where fade was driving back and forth from they had to get someone in that car who had a tracker on them without that they just can't you know they it's impossible for them to to follow the the car. Let's see. And yeah, um, the the um, Harry, you know, his his condition worsens. You know, they're they're running out of time. He needs a time transplant, and if they could get the bullet out, that would also help a lot. And, yeah, and the SS try to get Jace very, very tense situation. And, yeah, it, it is, you know, the, the fact that they, yeah, they have to get the bullet out. And, you know, she's not a surgeon, but she, you know, she's, she's aware of, the the it's, it's essentially she knows more or less what to do and what not to do very important for surgery but she's never done it before so yeah and yeah she she has to cut open his gut very effective effects there you know really appreciate that they went practical there and yeah that's one of those things like this you know just and I just, I just recently watched the 2022 David Cronenberg Crimes of the Future, so I've seen much, much worse, but it still just really, really gets to you, you know, seeing a human body cut open like that, and then blood, you know, pumping out. And, and yeah, that is the thing, like, the, the stomach, you know, a number of people die from being shot in the stomach if the, the bleeding is not stopped. It, it takes a, you know, it can, it can take a while. But, you know, you can get into a situation where it's almost impossible to save the person with less time, you know, and it's just, you know, yeah, at that point they'll, they'll die in not very long, it's just, yeah, so, e even if the bleeding has stopped, because there are some very, um, I, I want to say they're called arteries, you know, and, yeah. Um, she does manage to, to sew after, very, very clever, Lauren thinks, you know, I can, I can stop, you know, I can, I can put a block on the, on the, the artery with, with, you know, the, the mutant powers, very, very nicely done. And, yeah. Very tense when it seems like Fade just completely left. You know, he is not indeed at the 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 intersection on Elm Street. Talk about your nightmare on Elm Street. But he was nearby. And I will say for, for a little bit, it looked like, could Reed really move that fast? But he does limp, you know, and, and I don't know. I mean, maybe... It wasn't as quite as bad as it seemed with the with the screw. And 
yeah, very cool when when Polaris buys them some time with all the the metal poles, like you know, turning one of the the car hoods into a pincushion. But yeah, they respond with with tear gas, and ultimately they they have to. Let's see. They got yeah. They got the information in, enough information to find the the place, and then they, you know, yeah, they have to make a run for it. And you know, Dreamer is like, I can't leave Jace like this. And we see, you know, his his memory of, of Grace is, you know, yeah, and and he's like screaming. Very dramatic, very good scene, and and yeah, the 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 family dinner is legitimately kind of kind of sweet. And this thing of you know, this food is terrible. This is this is the the best terrible dinner I've ever had. And the yeah, because it's like you know, obviously they can't have as nice food as they you know. They they're used to this middle class food, not this kind of refugee you know. You, Kind of take what you can get, food. But at least they're together. And yeah, you know they they talk about again the the situation. You know, should should we go? Should we stay? And you know, Andy says, you know, what what about Mexico? I hear Cancun's pretty cool. Slight correction, Cancun Cancun is where pretty terrible senators go when their home state is cool. And, yeah, very tense when Clarice confronts Dreamer. And, yeah, you know, there's that line, you, know, you just stay away from me. And... Let's see... Yeah. Um, the... the final scene of the episode I believe is Jace you know he he forgot that Grace was was dead and Paula has to to remind him yeah really really yeah un unpleasant ver very nicely done scene and yeah, so some MDB trivia. Reed mentions a federal building in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, the same state with the fictitious town of Bon Ton. I'm going to go ahead and guess that's how you pronounce it. Exists from HBO's True Blood, on which Stephen Moyer played the character of Bill. That's I haven't watched that show, but I've seen a bunch of clips. I knew I recognized Stephen Moyer from somewhere. And, uh, yeah, you know he's the one who plays Reed on this show. The team uses a truck table labeled not tabled, Claremont Interstate Movers. Claremont developed the Morlocks during his extensive run as a writer on X-Men. A number of the mutants in the show come from the Morlocks. So that is a very cool reference. I'm going to try to do an episode tomorrow. And, yeah, really, really loving the, the season so far. Let's see, there's, yeah, there's 13 episodes total, so we are about a third of the way through season one, and yeah, um, thoroughly enjoying it so far.